Hello and welcome to High Voltage Engineering. Today we will be talking about measurement of high currents. These are both direct, alternating as well as impulse. So the topics we will be covering here is that the measurement of uh, high direct currents. Then we will be followed by the topic the measurement of high power frequency alternating currents. Then measurement of high frequency and impulse currents followed by measurements of high impulse currents other techniques like uh, rogowski coils uh, and magnetic links and we'll uh, finally we'll end with other techniques for impulse current measurements so we'll talk about the measurement of high uh, direct current dc currents so we have this uh, setup where we have a low ohmic shunt uh, with a milli voltmeter for current measurement okay uh, and the current passes through this uh, mainly based uh, through this shunt voltmeter it's the milli voltmeter which actually measures the current the high magnitude of the direct currents are measured using resistive shunt low ohmic value the voltage drop across the resistance is measured with the milli voltmeter so we measure the resistance and from the resist uh, the voltage drop we can get the value of the current so it is a uh, we first measure the volt voltage across the resistance and then since of a known resistance we can get the value of the current okay we can also use uh, the measurement of uh, high direct current using dc current transformers the uh, schematic diagram of the DC current transformer is shown here. So the principle of the transformer operates on the principle of ampere turn balance. That is the primary ampere turn N1 I1 are balanced by the secondary ampere turn N2 I2. Where N1 and N2 are the turns in the primary and secondary and I1, I1 and I2 are the respective currents in the winding. So depending on the amount uh, depending on the how the current is balanced we can measure the uh, measure the direct uh, high high direct currents okay so when the high direct current passes through this ferrite coat it will produce a circular magnetic field which will create a uh, which will create magnetic field crossing both the n1 and n2 turns now this N2 turns will uh, this N1 and N2 turns this has to be balanced and depending on the balance value we can measure the high direct current the high uh, direct current can be also measured by Hall generators for DC measurements now what is this Hall effect the principle of the Hall effect is is made used uh, used for the measuring of very high direct currents if an electric current flows through a metal plate located in a magnetic field perpendicular to it, the Lorentz force will deflect the electrons in the metal structure in a direction normal to the direction of both current and the magnetic field. So this is a well-known experience in the, for the, uh, when, when we have an electric charge passing through a magnetic field. The charge displacement generates an EM, EMF in the normal direction called the Hall voltage. So the Hall voltage is proportional to the current I, the magnetic flux density B and the reciprocal of the plate thickness small d. The proportionality constant R is called the Hall coefficient. So the Hall voltage produced here is given equal to R into Bi into D. So here we are measuring the current in terms of Hall voltage. Okay. Now we talk about measurement of high power frequency alternating currents. The measurement of uh, high power frequency alternating currents, uh, the schematic diagram is shown on your right hand side. The measurement of power frequency currents are normally done using current transformers only, as use of the current shunt involves unnecessary power loss. Also, the current transformer provides electrical isolation from high voltage circuits in power systems. 
Current transformers used for extra high voltage EHV system are quite different from the conventional design as they have to be kept at a very high voltage from the ground. Measurement of high frequency and impulse current. So we can see on the right hand side we have this calibrated low ohmic shunt and its equivalent circuit for impulse current measurement. So in power system application as well as other scientific and technical field it is often necessary to determine the amplitude and waveform of rapidly varying currents. So we need to measure high frequency currents and it is very much necessary in certain applications. The high impulse current occur in uh, lightning discharges electrical arcs and post arc phenomena studies with electrical breakers and with electric discharge studies in plasma physics. The current amplifier am, uh, amplitudes may range from a few am amperes to a few hundred kilo amperes. So this is the schematic diagram for the high frequency current measurement. So one of the ways of high frequency current, measure, uh, current is resistive shunts. So the resistive shunt is given, uh, the schematic diagram is given here. We have a resistance uh, in series with the inductance and we have a shunt capacitance across it. The current through the resistive element R produces a voltage drop Vt that is equal to It of R. The voltage signal generated in, is transmitted to the CRO through a coaxial cable of surge impedance Z0. The cable, of, uh, the cable at the oscilloscope end is terminated by the resistance Ri that is equal to Z0 to avoid reflection. The resistance element because of its large dimensions will have a residual inductance L and the terminal capacitance C. The inductance L may be neglected at low frequencies that is omega but becomes applicable appreciable for high frequencies omega when omega L is of order of R. Similarly the value of C can be considered when the reactance 1 by omega C is comparable values. Now we will talk about the measurement of high frequency impulse currents. Previously we have seen the resistive shunts. Now we will talk about bi failure strip shunts. The bi failure design consists of resistance register elements wound in opposite direction and folded back with both ends insulated by Teflon or other high quality insulation as shown in the figure. The voltage signal is picked up through uh, ultra high frequency UHF coaxial connector. The shunt suffers from stray inductance associated with the resistance element and its potential leads are linked to a small part of the magnetic flux generated by the current that is measured. To overcome these problems the coaxial shunts, uh, shunts are chosen. Now we will talk about coaxial tubular or park shunt. In the coaxial design the current is made to enter through the inner cylinder of the resistive element and made to return through the outer conducting cylinder of copper or brass. The voltage drop across the resistive element is measured between the potential pickup point and outer case. The space between the inner and the outer cylinder is air and hence act as a pure insulator. With the construction the maximum frequency limit is about 1000 MHz and the response time is a few nanoseconds. The upper frequency limit is generated by the skin effect of the resistive element. So this is the uh, schematic diagram of the uh, and the effective resistance is given by R0 theta of omega t. Now for the measurement of high frequency impulse current we can also use the spiral cage shunts. So the uh, compensatory network of the spiral cage shunt is given on the right hand side. In certain applications such as 
post arc current measurement high ohmic valuations which can be uh, which can dissipate larger energy are required in such cases tubular shunt are not suitable due to their limitation of heat dissipation larger wall thickness and skin effect to overcome this problem the resistor cylinder is replaced by thick rods or strips and the structure resembles the rotor construction of double spiral cage induction motor the equivalent circuit of the spiral cage construction is, uh, is difficult and comp uh, and complex so we have given a, a compensating network of the spiral cage shunts the shunts uh, the shunts show peak response of the step input and a compensating network has to be designed to get the optimum response now we'll talk about the uh, impulse current measurement there are other techniques that are one of them is called the rogowski coil current transformer and magnetic link now we'll talk about the rogowski coil rogowski coil is a toroid shaped coil is, is shown in the figure if a coil is placed surrounding a current carrying conductor the voltage signal induced in the coil that is vt of a function t is m di dt where m is the mutual inductance between the conductor and the coil and it is the current flowing in the conductor usually the coil is bound on a non magnetic former of toroid shape and is coaxially placed surrounding the current carrying conductor okay so we have a current carrying conductor through the a toroid shape coil the number of turns of the coil is chosen to be large to get enough signal induced the coil is wound crosswise to reduce the leakage inductance rogowski coils with electronic uh, with electronic or active in integrator circuit have a large bandwidth of about 1000 megahertz or sorry 100 megahertz at frequencies greater than 100 megahertz the response is affected by skin effect the capacitance distributed per unit length along the coil and due to the electromagnetic interference however miniature probes having nanosecond response time are made using a very uh, very few turns of copper strips of ultra high frequency measurements of the other techniques we'll talk about the magnetic links magnetic links are short high retentive steel strips arranged on a circular wheel or drum now in the magnetic link the magnetic links are short uh, high resistive steel strips which i have told arranged in a circular wheel or drum these strips have the property that the remnant magnetism of, of for current pulse of 0.5 by 5 millisecond is same as that caused by dc current of the same value hence these can be used for measurement of peak value of impulse currents the strips will be keep kept at a known distance from the current carrying conductor and parallel to it the remnant magnetism is then measured in laboratory from which the peak value of the current can be estimated these are useful for field measurement mainly for estimating the light li lightning current of the transmission lines and towers by using a number of links accurate measurement of the peak value polarity and the percentage oscillation in the lightning currents can be made we'll now talk about the other techniques for impulse current measurement one of them is called the hall generators a hall generator describes and, and that is described earlier can be used for ac and impulse current measurement also the bandwidth of such devices was found to be around 50 megahertz with a suitable compensating device and feedback the saturation effect is uh, in magnetic core can be minimized and these devices are successfully used for the post arc and plasma current measurements we also have a faraday generator or ammeter when linearly polarized 
light beam passes through the through a transparent crystal in the presence of magnetic field the plane or polarization of the light beams undergoes rotation so this rotation is uh, seen due to polarization and thus the current is measured we can also use current transformers the measurement of high frequency currents such as fault currents in power system switching currents transients and impulse currents during the impulse testing of the transformers can be measured using a current transformer which an air core or ferrite core the transformer will have a toroidal core with a central bar primary bound bound primary with a single turn okay so these are the some of the uh, other techniques for the impulse current measurement so i'll end the class here thank you